Yeah, it should accelerate over time, I would expect. Yeah, so long as we keep producing content that is better every time, which... Well... Should... Yeah, well. <laughs> so long What's... as every episode is better than the previous episode. Wow. Well... Yeah, so long as every episode makes the previous episode sound like a piece of shit that you don't even want to go back and listen to. I don't yeah. that this people one is. Like, listen to the old ones, and I'm just like, oh, you poor, your poor bastard ears. Look, imagine being, imagine, like, imagine, like, imagine being a well. There's your problem, hipster, though, and being like, "Yeah, I like it when they had the lo-fi sound better." Yeah, it was, it was really good back when it was just the first episode that was me and Alice. I liked it before <laughs> Liam came on the podcast. You really ruined it. Oh, okay, I guess I'm gonna hurt you now. <laughs> I will be right back, everybody. I'm going to drive across to West Philly and mm. break Roz's legs. Damn, you, you got to get through the the Assad. The Syrian army checkpoints get there, though. Yeah, I was yeah. about to say. Yeah, that's okay. Speaking, I know. I know a shortcut. <laughs> speaking of things breaking, welcome to. Well, there's your problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters with slides. Yeah, I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Oh, okay, uh, go. I am Alice Caldwell Kelly. I am the person who is talking now. My pronouns are she and her, and my throat hurts from doing. Uh, five and a half hours of podcasting and also laughing so hard I think I was about to lose my voice. So I will be talking less than normal. Just the entire uh, comment section goes, <laughs> fucking get in! Yes! Hi, <laughs> haters. Yeah, <laughs> It's your boy, yay Liam. My <laughs> yeah, pronouns yeah, Liam. are he, him. So I will bravely take up the, uh, we're gonna do the Russian system. When Alice kills over, I will take up her phone. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> You're gonna interrupt Justin for all the times I cannot. Yes, yes. We we stand ready to take back the yeah. podcast from. I guess the. I guess Roz, I'm calling you the Nazis here. Oh. Well, <laughs> well, there, well, there were a lot it. of people uh. in the comments of the Smolensk one who were absolutely convinced that Nazis and Poles were like the same thing. Did not about that one? That like uh, people, a couple people left us a one star reviews, being like they literally said the Nazis were right. And I'm just like, no, we that's didn't. not. That's not what that, we you said. You know, we didn't say that. No, you're being intellectually dishonest, and I don't respect you at all. Did I already mm. say my pronouns were he him? Yeah, yeah, you did. Okay, all right. So we're, let's we're do this. We're gathered here today on the occasion of Vladimir Lenin's 151st birthday. For yeah. shame that. To talk about uh, right. Pennsylvania, <laughs> Liam, Liam, Liam. I have, I have one answer for you. <laughs> uh, I'll just play "Being Out Here" is by Against Me, and then we can't even upload this uh, episode because mm. we'll get YouTube struck. That Usually I... assured podcast destruction. Fine. Oh God. Mm -hmm. So Lenin what? lived. Lenin lives. Lenin will live forever. I am told. That's not Lenin, how mor mortality works. But sure. Lenin walks Probably around story, the world. I guess. Uh, you know, the strangest tongues believe him, etc. Et Langston Hughes, yes. Langston but, Hughes, yeah. yeah. Before, before he like got cancelled for being a communist, and he was like, oh, I was never a communist, despite having written like uh, pro Lenin poems. Oh, that's no. I happen to. I like them personally. I didn't agree with his ideology. Just like, just like hastily tucking your Soviet flag back in at the uh, House of American Committee <laughs> yeah. uh, meeting. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't what's going on with the lighting I, I, of this jacket? I don't, I don't blame him for it at all. But it was also very funny in hindsight that he was just like communism. Never heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what we're gonna do today? What do you see on the screen in front of you? is a, a scene of utter calamity and horror, right? Um, we're going to talk about a disaster which is like etched into the cultural memory of Pennsylvania um, because it was such a horrible disaster, but also because it kept happening after it happened the first time. Oh. Uh, we're we're going to talk about the Johnstown flood of 1889. I love first, this painting you have here. It's like a oh, fucking Bruegel. Yeah. <laughs> but first, we have to do the goddamn news. Owned. Uh, owned. 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 Derek Chauvin owned. got owned. 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 He's owned. 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 I appreciate the the reports coming out that he's already on suicide watch, and all I can think Good, of I is I too would like to watch. 
that scene <laughs> from Futurama where Bender says, do a flip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we call this the double reverse face plant to broken hyoid bone. Um, yeah, no, the, the, the lowest possible bar for American justice has been cleared in that a yes. guy who we all saw brutally murder somebody has been convicted of murder in the second degree. Yeah, and it says a lot that uh, Roz and I both didn't th- certainly didn't think they were going to convict on all three counts. Nope. I was we're shocked, uh, yeah. genuinely I was shocked. shocked that they convicted on a majority of them, and yeah. stunned that they convicted on all three. Was that he got, say, that he was, was convicted of murder instead of manslaughter. I was surprised, yeah. and you could tell all of the cops were surprised, and all of the pundits on the right were surprised because they were fucking mad. Because no, they're just like, well, what's the point in living? Yeah, um, like one of the, the the fucking the fraternal order of police, the National Cop Union said that uh, it, our Nash, our American way of policing is on trial, and it's like, yeah, that was the idea, and it's been convicted. It is a bit frustrating though, because it's it you know I've I've seen the some some people just be like, well, see, yeah, exactly, like it's just a few bad apples, and. This is how it's designed to work, and then they killed a fifteen-year-old girl in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, while they yeah. were reading the verdict. Out. Yeah. yeah, well, I, I think it well, is. Well, she had a knife. Well, it doesn't fucking matter. There are four of you, rugby tackler. Mm. You guys wear stab-proof vests. What? One of the problems with bad apples is they spoil the bunch. Yes, yeah. yes, um, that is how that phrase <laughs> that, goes. That, that, that's how that they release ethylene gas, which causes the other apples to go bad more quickly. So uh, bananas also do that, but that just makes them ripen. So what we're saying is we have to do police abolition and replace them with bananas. Yes, I don't. I don't know what that would look well, like. I. I mean, bananas are not a very moral. A, 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 a fruit, bananas, the like a, a bananas, the fire department no. in this analogy. No, 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 no. It's more United Fruit Company bullshit. Oh, I see. Uh, I yeah. see. Maybe the United Fruit Company is fire department. You know, <laughs> um, my my local I don't co-op, like that at all. My local grocery co-op just switched from uh, getting bananas from some organic thing to getting Chiquita bananas, which is the United Fruit Company. I was like, "Wow, okay." Now you have to stop you eating bananas. That. You should protest that. I could go to the co-op board and yell at them. Yeah, you're not gonna though. I'm not you going a bitch. to. Yeah, but I could. <laughs> <laughs> Hypothetically, I could. I do like the idea. That that's what you make a stink about. Just mm. walking in there like gun drawn. Like Yeah. We're not we're not we're I not, want the old bananas. I am yeah, unwilling to I, compromise. We're just doing decision. fucking Kronstadt shit. We are forming a, an armed workers Soviet in defense of whatever banana brand we had previously. I'm not, I'm not going to buy I'm not gonna buy your blood bananas. That's right. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to take, his, I don't take his blood money. He's yeah. a dentist. Gums bleed. <laughs> yeah. He uh, hasn't been sentenced yet. Could be anything from almost nothing to like forty 60 years. Kentucky's, yeah, I think they'd have a hell of a time giving him almost nothing, though. Yeah, but then maybe that's like hindsight now that he has been convicted in the first place. Because I was convinced they were going to acquit him. So <sighs> I, I figure it will not be the maximum sentence. Although no. there are. What is it? Aggravating circumstances. Aggravating circumstances. Aggravating. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Because like because technically he's he's a first time offender. Uh, they would normally be limited to fifteen years unless there are aggravating factors. Now I would consider being a cop to be pretty fucking aggravating. Yes. But, uh, and in front of a child. Uh, yeah. Now he gets the full forty, but with thirty nine years and eight months suspended. Yeah, that's Fuck. what's gonna happen. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for speaking it into existence. Getting getting <laughs> getting forty years of unsupervised probation. I will yeah. say it's been it's been a tough week to be a prison abolitionist, mm. uh, and I'm just like I I don't want people in prisons. And at the same time, I hope they literally nail well, his dick to the, the floor. The, there is one solution, which is if but you it doesn't have to be in a prison. If if you if you don't if you don't want to imprison somebody like that, you can. Always Yeah, you could go back, you could go like full uh, 18th century England and just have execution as the penalty for every crime. It's neat. Or, or it's like orderly. transportation. We're going to put him yeah, on, a, on a ship oh, and we're yeah. going to send him to Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We got, uh, he, this is going to be the, he's going to be the yo, first source Derek of labor. Chauvin and Elon Musk buddy cop movie in space where they both redacted each other he halfway is, into the movie. He is You'd Elon Musk's sole source of labor and later protein. I would uh. <laughs> I would watch that. I would watch that. Oh no. boy. All right. So, um well, it's still uh, ACAB. It, yes. I mean, yeah, uh, no matter what uh that one guy on Twitter who really wants the attention uh who thinks I'm counter-revolutionary trash, uh cry about it to your 400 followers guy who wants the attention. Get I'm sorry. Ass. I'm uh, sorry your mom doesn't love you. All right. You know what? The Who podcast, could possibly love you? The podcast that hates you back. That's right. Mm-hmm. With a smile. All right. So, now we need to, before we talk about the Johnstown flood, we need to go through some context here. And we, we need to talk have, about what's Pennsylvania. We have yeah, to what, talk is, what is time. Pennsylvania? Yeah. What is Pen- Pennsylvania? Is Penn's Woods. Yeah, some guy, uh, this Quaker showed up. He can. He did a, a treaty that was one of the less exploitative ones, and then his kids like we're didn't like, end uh, run around actually, it. Uh, we're gonna find the fastest guy. Oh <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But William Penn himself. If you go on the like the Lenape tribes website, which they have, they're like, oh yeah, Penn himself, pretty good. All that, all that stuff was fine. His kids, though, fuck those guys. Thousands. Um, yeah, so you know, you don't have to do a land acknowledgement if you're, you know, in like this part of Pennsylvania. No, right? you are on you're on yeah. purchased Lenape land. Yeah, no, we bought, it, again, we, bought, baby. Yeah. <laughs> we bought it fair and square. <laughs> yeah. Everything and like else actually that's, for a decent deal, not just like yeah. for some beads. Yeah, exactly. Everything else that's uh that's, that's a little pretty shaky. It's pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. Um so okay. We need to talk about the main uh, podcast favorite, the main line of public works, which was a series of canals and railroads to connect Philadelphia over here to Pittsburgh over here, right? And there were a couple sections. It was supposed to be all a canal, but later they were like, we can't actually do it all as a canal. That's impossible. Mm. Right. I was so, yeah. told after I mentioned on a previous episode about the spelling that Pittsburgh used to be spelled and pronounced Pittsburgh. So yeah, it's all founded yes. by your people, Alice. I, I will yes. henceforth be calling it that under protest. I'm That's a Pittsburgh fine, irredentist. We do have an Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. Nice. There's a there's a state university there. Hmm. So there's you know, you what you would do is the main line of public works was a railroad from Philadelphia to Columbia, Pennsylvania, which Ooh. is on the Susquehanna River. <laughs> right. We've seen the remnants. We, you we did made actually, me stop there. Yeah, we did actually go go stop there last year and see a whole bunch of it. Yeah. Um, then you you uh, you brought sectional canal boats along the railroad, like it was a a canal boat that could be divided into two or three sections, put on flat cars for the railroad part, and then you put it back together when you got to the canal and you canaled it. Up the uh, what was called the uh, Eastern Division Canal, and then the Juniata Division Canal that went up the Susquehanna River, and then up the Juniata River. Juniata, Juniata. I'm from there. I get to correct you. Okay. <laughs> um, that went to a place called Hollidaysburg, and in Hollidaysburg, you hauled the boat out of the water, you split it up again, and you went over the Allegheny Portage Railroad, right? And that's this guy here. Um, and also this tunnel here. Um, so, you know, the boat was hauled over the mountain because of a problem with canal engineering, right? Um, it's hard so, to go uphill. Yeah, you gotta have a look at locks and shit. Now, because, because railroads were still in their infancy, they were actually built exactly like canals. Um, also hard to go uphill. Is this yeah. is this the place where uh, you made me walk up an inclined plane after making me walk across uh, a two lane highway? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. So fun aside, everybody. I uh, there I was tremendously hungover, mad at the world. Who's, and who's also that, hungover? Liam? You yeah, but it was your fault. Like oh. this, this <laughs> it like no, dude. It's not like oh you know. And to be fair, no one put a gun to my head and said Liam chugged this beer. I. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, because I wasn't Roz, there. Roz did a, a, a baton march to me. Uh, 
and and I had to walk. We had to walk up this incredibly steep hill because that's where the inclined plane used to be. Yes. And then Ross made me uh, be the inclined plane, and I too had to haul a canal boat, which was very uncomfortable. Uh, and then he laughed at me and tricked me and said, "Hey, fat boy, run!" And I cried. <laughs> <laughs> I I do love the stories of like urbex with Roz. So, yeah, they're they're always entertaining. Someone's always on the verge of throwing up because they've been drinking a little too much. Yeah, I gotta go yeah. on the road with you guys. Uh, yeah, once, yeah, well, once we have to come fun. to you for once to... international travel is possible again. Just slip the border. Be an oh, adult, yeah. slip the border. Yeah, that's true. So the Allegheny Portage Railroad, that's this section between Johnstown and Hollidaysburg, right? Um, this is sort of built like a canal in that the railroad parts are flat. Then there's an inclined plane where the weight of cars ascending and descending the grade sort of um, pulls them up and down along with some assistance from a stationary steam engine. No one actually thought railroad locomotives could go up and down hills yet. Um, so yeah, it was built the water like a would canal. Slosh backwards. Very it, dangerous. They, it was built like a canal, but it wasn't a canal. And the main reason why it wasn't a canal is because they couldn't find a good source of water at the top of the grade in order to fill the locks, right? And you could get the water up there if you pumped it up there, but that was expensive, right? Uh, usually what you want to do with a canal is go with the cheaper option where you just sort of reroute existing waterways to fill the canal. And they just couldn't do it in that section. That's why that section was a railroad from the start. Um, hmm. So, you know, once you hauled it over the mountain, you got the Johnstown, you put it back in the canal. Uh, this is the Western Division Canal that went all the way to Pittsburgh. But the Western Division, uh, uh, Division Canal also had some issues we'll get to in a second. Um, now, the main line of public works itself was an extremely expensive, uh, I wouldn't say quite unmitigated failure, but it never really competed with uh, the Erie Canal in New York, right? Um, the whole system got sold to the Pennsylvania Railroad in 1857, who immediately diverted most of the traffic to the railroad. Um, the whole system, the whole canal system you see here, you know, covered a lot of Pennsylvania. Uh, this was not completely closed until 1901, but it fell out of disuse pretty quick. Fell into disuse, not fell out of disuse. Uh, <laughs> so, um, now the Western Division Canal had a problem. Johnstown's the high point, and it sort of flows uh, downhill all the way to Pittsburgh, right? Mm. Um, and one of the things is there, you know, the the rain there is pretty seasonal, and a lot of times during uh, during the drier uh, months, you know, uh, or during conditions of drought, the canal wouldn't have enough water in it to operate properly, right? You wouldn't be able to fill the locks very quickly. You wouldn't be able to move as much traffic as you wanted, right? Um, so after the canal's first season of operations in 1934, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania commissioned an engineer named Silve Sylvester Welch to find a way to impound water to use during drier months, right? And he says the way to do this is to dam uh, the Kanama River. I don't know if that's how that's pronounced. Good enough. I'll take Good it. Enough, yeah. yeah. It's sure. it's Lenape for Otter Creek. Aw. Um Hey, but look. earthen dams. I love a good earthen dam. Oh yeah. So they um they started uh they authorized construction in 1836, but they only began work on it in 1840. This is the sixth uh year of operation for the canal, right? Um Work stopped in 1842 when the dam was half finished, uh, and nice. in 18, 1847, part of the dam fails. Right? Has, how how bad are we talking? I don't think it was like a major flood, but it was a flood. You know? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Work continued in 1851, and was completed in 1852. So, with the South Fork Dam and the Western Reservoir, as it was called, finished the canal could now operate reliably in drought conditions. And it did so for one year. Then the canal went out of business. That's more, year than, that's more years than your canal has worked for, Roz. <laughs> <laughs> so, in 
So all the thing was sold to the Pennsylvania Railroad, which of course at this point had built, you know, a railroad, right? And that right. sort of drove the canal out of business. So they had all this canal infrastructure they didn't really know what to do with. Uh, float trains, duh. Uh, hmm. Car floats, car floats everywhere. <laughs> oh, God. Well, when you think about it, they were, you know, it's designed to operate the reverse of that. No, car floats everywhere. Flo- float car, hmm. I guess. Float car? A boat, a boat car. Yeah. Uh, so this dam, you know, they had finished it. It was basically brand new. They had no idea what to do with it. They just sort of let it sit there for a while. Come Here's- down, come down to the Pennsylvania Railroad pre-owned canal lot and <laughs> sales center. We have the best <laughs> deals available for you. You want a canal? This bad boy will fit so many boat cars in it, no problem. <laughs> you want to take coal and shit from the mountains? You can take coal and shit from the mountains. You want to give a bunch of immigrant laborers uh, dysentery and a whole bunch of shit no one's ever heard of, and you bury them in a in a in a in a basically a, a siding for twenty five fucking years, and then you lie about it. You can do that, no problem, <laughs> no problem at all. Come down to Pennsylvania excess uh, uh, canal storage, Joe. Ask for Joe. <laughs> yeah, we sold this canal to the 1901 version of Megatronics. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Megatronics. Little, little do we know has a 990 year lease to this <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, Megatronics S <laughs> 1900. <laughs> yeah, the, the ninja swords are really just for decoration, actually. No, those are actual ninja swords. Those are actually from the fucking uh, war. Uh, oh fuck! What's the name of the period? The Sengoku period. Here, here, here's, I guess, uh, okay, so this is an earth and rock filled dam. It's 72 feet high, 918 feet long, 10 feet wide at the crest up here, right? 220 feet wide at the base. It had a 70 foot wide emergency spillway, right? Um, your basic theory of operation here, you know, the dam holds back a reservoir, right? There's this control tower here from which you could use some control lot, r- rods to open sluice gates that fed into five cast iron pipes, and those cast iron pipes went into a stone culvert underneath the dam, and then an outlet into the Little Kanama River, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so you could discharge as needed to fill the canal. You could drain the whole reservoir if you needed to, in case you needed to do repairs. You know, uh, as originally designed, the dam worked pretty good, right? Um... But again, it was abandoned almost immediately after it was finished, right? Um, here's uh, here, here's our, our reservoir. Here's the the South Fork Dam is up here. Um, there was a spillway on the side, right? Um, now and and you know at the time it was built, this railroad that runs straight through it was not there, obviously. Um, so. You know, the dam wasn't really being maintained after it when it fell into disuse, right? The uh in 1862, the culvert in the dam collapsed and sort of washed out. They didn't do any repairs on that, right? Um, the Pennsylvania Railroad sold the dam and the reservoir to Pennsylvania Congressman John Riley, right? And John Riley kind of sits on it, but what he does what he does do is he sold the uh cast iron discharge pipes for their scrap value, right? Hell oh, yes. Yeah. Literally, early 20th century, strip the copper wiring out. Yep. Uh, mid-19th century. Oh, fuck. A game yeah. changer. Okay. A pioneer. A visionary. <laughs> for, <laughs> for ripping yeah, shit before, out of before shit. that, before this, guys had to like steal the lead off of church roofs. But this guy yeah. was in the like <laughs> stolen scrap metal game in a like a way that people wouldn't be for decades. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so now it was impossible to dewater the reservoir if you needed to do repairs on the dam, right? Ideal. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Right. So in 1879, a man named Benjamin Franklin Ruff organized a recreational club for rich guys in Pittsburgh. No, thank you. I prefer my Benjamin Franklin smooth. (laughs) 
just walking up to him, like touching his face, being like, "Oh, <laughs> it'd be un- a smooth un- Benjamin un- Franklin, un- unblemished by uh, cirrhosis and everything else he probably had." Mm. That's the uh, that's that would be, I guess, the statue on the bench at University of Pennsylvania. I hate that, yeah, I hate po- that po- fucking po- statue. Post smooth Ben Franklin's. <laughs> oh, you rub it for good luck. Fuck you. Fuck your dumb school. Should have gone to Temple. Smooth Ben Franklin hanging out with smooth Bernie Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> so Benjamin Franklin Ruff uh, organized this club with Henry Clay Frick. Oh Henry- shit! My oh, favorite yes. industrialist, who you may yeah. remember from very nearly getting popped as part getting, of propaganda getting from popped the deed. By, by Emma Goldman's boyfriend Alexander Berkman, yep. who <laughs> bust into his office with a gun and a sharpened steel file to try and kill him, and de- and came damn close. From back in the day when you could just go to a guy's office and like be like, "Oh yeah, this is the building named after the guy." Hi, he, he I'm here at two yeah. o'clock and just yeah, get shot yeah. the chest. He, he is an actual guy. He has a he, he like has a name on his door and everything. And you won't get taken out by like a Blackwater sniper nest as soon as you come within a mile of his yeah. house. You can just walk right up to him and just like do the job, right? But mm, didn't didn't come off. No. Sad to say. Yeah. And anarchism has failed ever since. That's yes. right. Shut up, Alice. Should have should, 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 should have organized this stuff in some kind of a state. No, we can't do that. That's no. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> his uh, he he made his fortune through coke, right? Mm-hmm. Not the good kind. Ladies no, and no, not it's not it's not Coca Cola and it is not cocaine. It's coking no. coal, right? No. Which is lame. used in the steel industry. Welcome to Pennsylvania, yeah. land of opportunity. Um, so he he wound up buying the reservoir and the surrounding land, and the intention here was to repair the dam use the reservoir and the surrounding land for fishing and hunting, right? So, Benjamin rich guy Frank, stuff. Rich guy stuff, rich yeah. Rich guy stuff, yeah. So they, they go about doing this in 1881. It was very popular, started attracting a lot of Pittsburgh's upper crust, including, of course, Andrew Carnegie, right? The steel guy. Samuel Ree, who was eventually president of the Pennsylvania Railroad. Uh, Andrew Mellon, you know, the Mellon Bank guy. Uh, a whole bunch of other people. One of the fun things is if you sort of go through the history, a lot of the guys that joined this club didn't like each other. They just oh, really you know, crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, a bunch uh, of old rich guys all trying to arrange hunting accidents for each other. Yeah. Oh, oh no, Barnaby! <laughs> I seem to have shot you thirty-seven times. <laughs> Actually, it's a Pittsburgh accent. So, oh no, I shot you in forty-five times. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gay Steelers. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I love the idea that that's what Andrew Carnegie talked like. Although, fucking, no, uh, he he was fucking. He, the, the one thing I remember about, about Andrew Carnegie is the reason why I pronounce his name Andrew Carnegie, which is that he demanded, under threat of serious legal action, a correction in every newspaper that pronounced, uh, uh, like, that suggested his name was pronounced that way. And he insisted to his dying day it was Andrew Carnegie. And he would uh, a- it's absolutely. Carnegie. No, it's Andrew Carnegie. <laughs> Fuck yeah. you. Yeah, we're alive and you're dead. Yeah, so yeah, old dead bitch. We're alive, um, Lennon's alive, and you're not. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, so, I get a little antsy yeah. when I've been recording for like five hours. The specter is haunting Pittsburgh. The yeah. specter of communism. That's right. That's actually true, but whatever. So the, um, you know, a whole bunch of other people went on to be like congressmen and stuff like that joined this club called the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club. When uh, Langston Hughes wrote that the strangest tongues receive Lennon, he was talking about Pittsburgh. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, he sure was. That, that's all of Pennsylvania, which has probably more regional dialects than I think any other state. Um, I thank God every day I don't have one. <laughs> yeah, you that's don't have you an think. accent at all. 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 Hello, I'm Alice Caldwell Kelly. Next Britain. slide, please. Okay. Yes. So, this is the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club Clubhouse. Oh, it looks like it's still shit. There. 
No, I really <laughs> like this. Yeah, like, I look at the siding, Alice. Yeah, look at the, look the siding. Porch. No, what I do don't you like care? it. You're not, oh, are you looking at the siding when if you're I, on the if, porch? If, it should if, be. If I'm so rich that anarchists are trying to stab me with a sharpened file, no, I, I like want it. nicer siding. I like this. Alice is like 140 years old. Yeah, and it's called maintenance. Yeah, the National Park Service owns it no. now. That's why it looks like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's because big government uh, intervened. Uh, <laughs> Way to go, Alice. <laughs> no, big government's probably the only reason it's still standing up. That's true, yeah. Yeah, to be so, fair, if, if it were maintained by anarchists, it would have melted it down for firewood already. It's just a polycule living in the ruins. Yeah. <sighs> so, the South Fork Reservoir, right? was not a great place for the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club because it was an artificial reservoir and as such it had no fish. Which makes just, fishing difficult. This is rich guy stuff. It's water, Bartleby, so I assume there are fish in it. <laughs> right. Fish fucking it. What they the had fi to the do, fish are all toxinous. They had to bring in like tens of thousands of fish on trains from places that had <laughs> fish. <laughs> Backing up my big yep. trailer full Ow. of live fish. Do you have a picture of the fish train? I do not. I Damn. wish I did. Damn. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess you just throw them in a tank car. Sure. And then <laughs> it's and my then worst nightmare, them, but I'm morbidly fascinated bring by Bring them up to the reservoir. Can, and you then, be uh, a, can you imagine being the guy who had to load that? <laughs> mm. Just like, well, my sense of smell is gone, and now I'm in a state of open rebellion against my employer. Yeah, so because had, a bunch of rich weirdos want to fish. I have, I have like a tank car full of koi. Yeah, so they they had to stock the reservoir with fish artificially, right? Artificially, <laughs> artificially. Yes, that's right. It's um, twice as annoying, people. You thought I wouldn't interrupt, but I'm rallying now because because they wanted to protect their fish investment. They installed <laughs> a fish screen. In front of the spillway from ah, the, the dam. Fucking enclosure happens yeah. again and again. Because yeah. the, they don't the, want the fish, they don't want the fish to escape the reservoir. Mm. Now, the fish screen did prevent the fish from leaving, but it also caught debris, right? And required frequent cleaning to make the keep the spillway open. Yeah, I'm right? the guy who has to clean the fish screen with well, <laughs> the rich brush. weirdo. No, thank you. Um, now, there was another problem with the club, and that was access, right? Members of the club didn't want to drive their horse and carriage all the way around the lake to get to the clubhouse, right? That's understandable. But, but they're not driving. Someone is driving them. With an yeah, 1880s pistol to their head, yeah. But the lake has a seven-mile perimeter, and the coach goes like seven miles an Read hour. Read a book! <laughs> I thought you were just telling Roz to read a book, like, unsolicited advice. Yeah, yeah I, I always will no, do. It's, it's, it's Carnegie there in his carriage reading uh, Harry Potter or some garbage, yeah. <laughs> yeah re reading inexplicably Atlas Shrugged. <laughs> so, to fix that problem of access, the top two feet of the dam were lopped off to create a wide path for horses and carriages on top of the dam, right? Mm -hmm. Now... Uh. Two feet doesn't sound like a lot, but you got to think about the shape of a reservoir here, sort of the cross section, right? The top two feet of the reservoir have the widest cross section of the whole reservoir, so every inch counts uh, when you're talking about this sort of stuff, uh, especially at the top of the dam, right? Um, now, other than this, you know, they tried to do some maintenance on the dam, right? It kept springing leaks because it hadn't really been maintained for like 20 years previously. That'll do it. Their idea for fixing uh, leaks in the dam was they would just patch the leaks with um, mud and straw. You're the um, richest industrialist the world has ever seen to that point. Yeah, and they didn't become yeah. the richest industrialist the world has ever by, seen by to that point. By, by, yeah, by, yeah, by yeah, properly true. doing maintenance or by to say, uh, you gotta, paying full price for materials. You don't get you don't get rich by spending too much. I mean, yeah. So the thing is these bud and straw patches didn't work very well and they no. settled unevenly, no. right? And it created high and low spots on the dam. Now there was one member of the club named Daniel Johnson Morrill, uh, who was a Republican congressman from uh, Johnstown. Uh, he expressed severe concern about the state of the dam. 
he even offered to repair it with his own money, uh, which was an offer that club president uh, Benjamin Franklin Ruff turned down. A yeah, really uh, abrasive uh, Benjamin Franklin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Both both of these members take died the free before money, man. the flood. <laughs> I do want to point out that it's pronounced, as far as I've heard it, Kanama. Kanama. You actually okay. pronounce it Kanima. 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 Very good. Thank you. Okay. okay, I'm done. That's all my jokes. Great. It's very impressive. So, anyway. So I guess we have some context here at Johnstown, Pennsylvania, right? It's the console. Sorry, it's- folks. It's at the confluence of the Stony Creek River and the Kanima Rivers, right? Question. Yes. What? what is the lime green ulcer on the left it, here? It's here? probably a golf course. That's a golf gross. course. Gross. Gross. Yeah. gross. Yeah, because nothing says romance and adventure like Johnstown, Pennsylvania. There's a <laughs> University of Pittsburgh campus there. Uh, once again, uh, Pitt cured polio and Penn State did. So. Ab- ab- abolish golf. Take all that. of the golf courses, make them into housing. I wonder where or you the, could I, live under the holes, like it's an old disused Nike bunker. Yeah, just do that. <laughs> just tunnel them all out. It'd be a golf mall lock. This was golf uh, chud. Uh, golf mall people. That'd be great. Yeah. This is a big railroad town. It's on the Pennsylvania Railroad main line. It has it had a lot of steel and metal works. Even to this day, they're still there. They just yeah, don't you can tell by the river. People. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, and even back in the day, they they it flooded pretty frequently. Oh, another thing is they had a lot of coal. That's just off screen. Um, now laughing too. Yeah, bituminous coal. This was uh, this was the the the, the, the good the, shit. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, the not good. Sh- well, it depends oh, right, on how, you, how do you my, define good? The um, bad shit. Yeah. That's so, Pennsylvania, baby. Now, for a long time, Johnstown had been subject to pretty frequent flooding, right? And folks knew that, like. All right, if there's a certain amount of rain, it's time to head upstairs because stuff's going to get wet, right? So, um, anyway, on May 31st, 1889, oh boy, Johnstown was hit with the worst rainfall ever recorded in Pennsylvania, uh, at least up until that time. It wasn't right? probably until Hurricane uh, Agnes. Uh, that it was broken. As far as I yeah. know, I could be wrong. You can still see that fucking golf course looking out like a like a fucking mitten. <laughs> it's like giving yeah. you a thumbs up. I hate it so much. <laughs> so fuck golf courses. Six to ten inches of rain fell in twenty four hours. Right, uh, the Kanima River was overflowing its banks, and some streets in uh, Johnstown were under ten feet of water. Right. Now, that morning, the new president of the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> Elias Unger, maybe Unger, uh-huh, I don't know. That's a name. Yeah. He woke up, and he saw that the South Fork Dam was close to overtopping. Uh-oh. So he went back to bed and got N- his slave no, boy no. to handle it. <laughs> no. So he, he, he you know, t- to his credit, he got. He mobilized My a bad. lot of people immediately. My bad. Sorry, <laughs> so having to apologize to a guy Unger. named Elias Unger. Yeah. I'm sorry, ghost yeah. of Mister Unger. So you know, the, the situation was the, the the fish screens were all clogged with debris from the rainstorm, right? <clears throat> the sorry, just the was... image of clogged fish screens is a very funny <laughs> yeah. one to me. The spillway was basically inoperable, right? He, cool. he, as- <laughs> he assembled a group of men to make a last ditch effort to save the dam. And they set about trying to unclog the spillway, and they got out shovels to start putting dirt on top of the dam, oh, hopefully God. to buy them some time. So a literal last-ditch effort. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so Unger sent John Park, who was an engineer associated with the club, to go down to go warn towns downstream of the dam's imminent failure. But thing was. They had warned towns downstream of the dam's imminent failure a few times before, so no one took it seriously. Well, that sucks to suck. Yeah. yeah. And there'd been a number of false alarms, so, you know. I like that the responses were just going to ignore it rather than, oh, maybe this time they're right. Maybe yeah, they're we just got lucky all those other times. The dam that cried wolf, famous parable. 
Uh, some there there may be some mitigating uh, uh, something to mitigate the authorities' response here. John Park himself did not wind up telling you know the uh, town's uh, town authorities about the situation personally. He actually wound up sending a man to go do it for him. Who I guess maybe had less authority. I don't know. Um, mm. So around one thirty p.m. that day, the workers gave up trying to repair the dam because it was too dangerous to go on. Right. All right. And, and in the meantime, from just the amount of rain which had fallen that day, Johnstown itself was already completely inundated, right? Some streets were 10 feet underwater already. Um, so even if warnings had been heeded, evacuation was close to impossible, right? Hope y'all could float, right? Yeah. I, even that doesn't help you for, for, for what's coming. <laughs> yeah, boy. Bunch of fish. Yeah. So, Stop it. Stop it. I don't disrespect you like this. <laughs> Over Man, they've, they've built that dam really poorly <laughs> if all of that shit's happening to it at once. And I think the main problem is that it just stops. You know, that water's yeah, yeah, gonna flow around the side. No, yeah. luckily there's a giant pane of glass right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, this is a, this is a these are various ways a dam can fail. But um Contact way, groin. What? Contact groin. On the Contact. Uh, left. Con see for Contact, yeah. Contact groin. Contact groin. Oh yeah, contact right. That's right here. Huh. Yeah. I also like the one that just says rodent activity. Like yes. any of it. What kind of activity? Beavers can any. fuck shit up. Beavers are fuckers. That yeah, is true. I like, believe that. I just, just like the it. idea of like this like uh crack team of beaver spies that sees a dam and is like, ah, competition, we must undermine this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, beaver industrial espionage. Hmm. There's lots of ways an earthen dam can fail, um, but one of the worst is overtopping. Um, now, is some that when dams, stuff goes over the top? That's when, that's when the water goes over the oh, top, right? Okay. So, you know, one of, one of the things, some dams are designed to be overtopped, I guess those would be weirs, not dams. Um, mm. You know, but once water starts overtopping an earthen dam, it causes erosion, right? So it starts taking the dirt on the top of the dam with it, right? So you have a cross section that's full of water now. Now, as the cross sectional area of the eroded portion increases, more water flows through. That water flows faster; it erodes more quickly, right? This is sort of a this is a vicious cycle, right? So once you have some, once it starts overtopping, you cannot stop it. Um, you, it's it, it's gone at that point. It's just a matter of time, right? Um, that's this is why overtopping is so so dangerous and why you never want it to happen. Um, so at two fifty five p.m., the South Fork Dam overtopped. Right, three point eight four billion gallons of water suddenly had nothing holding it back. Right, it was uh, it was off to the races. Yeah, carrying a bunch of rich boy fish. Yeah, cue, uh, cue the William Tell overture here. Um, <laughs> I don't have a drop, so I'm just going to do it with my mouth. <laughs> 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 I have to find a recording that doesn't get us a copyright strike, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can, I can do you the news, if that helps. No. So, right here, this is about where the South Fork Dam was, right? See the town of St. Michael here and Sidman here, those weren't there at the time. Those are part of the reservoir. So the dam breaks, right? Um, and this wall of water and debris starts heading down a river to the town of South Fork. South Fork had received some warning. It was also built on high ground, so it escaped comparatively unscathed. 20 to 30 buildings were destroyed. Four people were killed in South Fork, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Next was uh, the next obstacle it had was the uh, Kanema Viaduct, which is over here, right? Um, so this is this was a you know your strong uh, single span, heavily built arch bridge, right? This is built yeah, way arches back. Arches love staying up. Yeah, oh, yeah, famously. This was built way back in 1833 for the Allegheny Portage Railroad. You know, this is a nicely proportioned, well decorated, very heavy bridge, right? Um, and it was now facing down a wave of water with a flow rate greater than the entire Mississippi River Delta. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. 
millions of tons of water and debris slammed into this bridge at about 40 miles an hour, and it held for seven minutes. Archers <laughs> fucking love staying up. They love yes. it, man. <laughs> That's a heroic seven minutes. I will give the bridge About to that. say. Yeah. <laughs> um, now the thing is, once it because it held back this enormous wave of water, it sort of acted like another dam, right? Oh boy. So yeah. Oops. This this wave of water, which had been slowly like dissipating, now had renewed strength, um, renewed hydraulic head. Um, yeah, you've made the water mad. Yes. yes, exactly. You've angered the flood. You've <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so suddenly we, we've gone from, you know, a 70 foot wall of water down to, I don't know, maybe a 20 foot wall of water. Now we're back up to a 70 foot wall of water, right? Yeah, it, it moves to its second form. Yes. Big, angry wave too continues on its 14 mile path of total and complete obliteration right so its next stop is here mineral point right mineral point was a small town it was about one mile downstream of the viaduct it had about 30 houses along one street and it was it was uh it, it was wiped from this plane of existence um just total obliteration Ooh. Nothing wow. remained. No structures, no foundations, no topsoil. The, the entire valley there was stripped clean down to bedrock. Jesus. Oh, you can start over real nice, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Assuming you repopulate the area and so on. This, uh, and it makes getting coal out <laughs> all the easier. <laughs> Try to continue down the river, down to uh, the town of East Kanima, right? Um, now, witnesses at high ground on East Kanima described the approaching torrent as looking less like a flood and more like an enormous moving hill bearing down on the town. God with like yes. buildings and shit in <laughs> yeah, it. It's yeah, it's like yeah. carrying all the shit like Katamari. <laughs> yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so there was uh, the railroad go follows the, the river here, right? Up to about South Fork and then it turns uh, north. Um, there was a railroad engineer named John Hess. He was taking a train out of East uh, Kanima when he spotted the oncoming tide of trees, buildings, animals, and people, right? Uh, um, and he threw the locomotive into reverse and just went full speed backwards through East Kanima, <laughs> blowing the whistle the whole time. Yeah, understandable. Uh, understandable. Yeah. <laughs> alerting, like alerting. Put it in R. Yeah, put it in R. Alerting a lot of people to make for high ground. Um, you know, the, the flood caught up with him, but somehow he managed to survive. And I'm filing an incident report, and I will be taking my seven and a half overtime. He, Thank uh, you. he used his gigantic Unsafe work environment. <laughs> used his two gigantic balls as flotation devices. So there were there were two there were two uh, major industries in East Kanima, right? Um, sort of linked together. There was the Cambria Ironworks and the adjacent Gatier Wire Works. Uh, what do you think their specialty was? Wire. Iron and wire. A uh, specific type of wire. Um, uh, lead. Mm. They don't make lead wire, do they? N uh, no. Like copper wire? No. I was thinking it was too early for that. Yeah. Um, fuck. Maybe not. Uh, what are telegraph poles made of? Barbed wire. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's not so good. So all this barbed wire is now picked up and entangled into this massive wave of debris barreling towards downtown Johnstown at 40 miles an hour. That's bad. <laughs> yep. So <laughs> this, uh, this deluge, this tidal wave comes down into Johnstown proper. It's about 57 minutes after the dam broke, right? It swept through the town, destroying all but the most heavily built structures. Um, so it sort of came through down here, past this ironworks. Um, it sort of flowed through downtown, but most of it went into what's called the Stone Bridge, right? Um, the stone bridge was a relatively new structure in 1889, 
carried the Pennsylvania Railroad across the Kanema River, right? Um, and a whole bunch of debris piled up against it, sort of formed a temporary dam, uh, which caught fire. Um, oh, great. Yes. Just so, a bunch of burning uh, cows and people and barbed wire and houses and shit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this, is uh, the worst, like, like, this is the worst yard sale I've ever been to. Getting called out from the fire department and I, go, I gotta go put out the, the flooded barbed wire fire. I think the fire department's probably been destroyed by this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, now, unlike the other viaduct, this one held, right? That's but the incredible. flood water is still pouring in. So what it does is it turns around and starts flowing up the Stony Creek River. <laughs> Again, the water is mad, and now it has changed <laughs> direction in order yes. to come after more victims. So it flows all the way up the Stony Creek River until gravity eventually gets a hold of it. And then it comes back down. <laughs> Ch- for fuck's floods sake. everything again. Oops. Smashes back into the stone bridge, right? Are um, the people of Johnstown not entitled to a fucking break? A breather, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to being caught in the world's shittiest game of water pinball. So possibly the only game of water pinball. So at this point, like a lot of downtown Johnstown just got completely destroyed just through the motion of the water as well as its outer suburbs. Um, you know, it came in, it 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 all this debris got slammed up against the stone bridge. Which again somehow held um, the fire here burned for three days. Um, you know, it's all entirely full of trees, parts of houses, barbed, barbed wire, wire horses, railroad cars, <laughs> livestock, people, just stuff. Yeah, viscera. Just, yes. Saw um, that, an entire atmospheric railway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like the dang loop in there. Yeah, I was about to say. I mean, this is uh. This is a painting made shortly after the disaster called Detail of the Great Kanama Valley Disaster, Flood and Fire at Johnstown, Pennsylvania, subtitled Hundreds Roasted Alive at Railroad Bridge. Jesus. You don't get evocative language like roasted alive anymore. No. This is true. Reject modernity. In praise Broiled. tradition. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like all the women swooning, because oh, like, yes. I, I, I would be doing I would that. Swoon. I'd be yeah, swooning. I'd yeah. definitely be swooning, yeah. yeah. I, I like the. I also like the woman in the bottom left who is just on a horse, fucking tearing ass out of there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's no. Probably... I don't want to go to the fire flood. <laughs> yeah, I think I. Yeah, just like the the share zone, you can leave if you're fast you, enough. You just walk out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just get on your horse and just fucking go. Leave yeah. town. <laughs> so um, you know, it's difficult to convey like the scale of this disaster through even the photographs that were around at the time. Uh, this is the main street. Um, you can see uh, it, it's about piled up to the first story of buildings with just, you know, lumber. And matchsticks. Matchsticks, yeah. yeah. I'm sure most of this caught fire at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, also still full of, like, barbed wire. Yes, it's all full of barbed wire, telegraph poles, telegraph cables. Um, I'm sure dudes, was, people, yeah, dudes, horses, mm, yeah. horses, horses cow, if you will. cows. Um, Coal. Railroad Coal. cars. Railroad, railroad stuff. cars. Bits of bridge. Bits of Here. topsoil. This is the stone bridge after a couple weeks of debris removal. Strong um, ass bridge. Yes. Arches um, love to stay up. Yes. Um, you know, when, when all this debris came in, it was a pile 70 feet high covering 30 acres. Jesus. All full of barbed wire. Y- yeah. Yeah. That's bad. Um, and removal of this debris was very slow, um, but they eventually figured out how to speed it up uh, when a man named Dynamite Bill Flynn. Hell yeah. Showed Found up. a guy. Yeah, we found it. We found a dynamite guy. We had a crew <laughs> of 900 people who just blew it all up. Just fucking easy Pete from Fallout New Vegas has yeah. showed up. <laughs> and he is going to dynamite this barbed wire into atoms. Yes. Uh, this was not a, a super duper survivable flood. One of the ways you could do oh, it, no? though, uh, was to be lucky enough to be in a structure that remained intact as it was carried away. 
So this is the John Schultz house. Um, it's it was, not supposed uh, to look like that. It's not Probably supposed, not. Not supposed to look like that. This was um, skewered by a huge tree and then uprooted by the flood, moved off its foundations on Main Street, and then floated a couple blocks down to Union Street and then got deposited on its side. There were, there were six people in there, uh, including the owner, Mr. Schultz. Uh, all of them survived. Just throwing up out the side of your window door, like yeah. I, I always wanted to live in a bouncy castle. Uh, I, tell, I tell you what about John Schultz, though. Guy knew how to build a fucking house. Oh, I was about to say, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty well built house. Does not skimp on the siding <laughs> at any point. Mm -hmm. Another, another railroad car just uh, sitting over here. Um, yeah. So a bunch of yeah, barbed wire. There's some accounts of people, you know, just being, just being. If you got past, you know, one one of the tricks was not getting uh, stuck in the debris pile uh, at the stone bridge. If you somehow got past that, a lot mm. of times you, people uh, you managed swept to clear. like, yeah, you get swept clear. You, you actually had a little better chance of surviving. There were folks downstreams with like poles trying to fish people out of the river. I like that you call it a trick, like you're going to get the prima strategy guide for surviving <laughs> the Johnstown flood. Well, it's not it's like, like this oh, didn't fuck, happen I again. Read that. Oh boy. <laughs> maybe maybe we can do at least two more episodes on Johnstown floods. <laughs> oh boy. So you know, here's here's sort of the the downtown area shortly after the flood. This is taken from the funicular, which is still there. I think it's the only funicular in the United States you can drive your car on. Huh. Um yeah. Um you can see most of the downtown is now just vacant land. Um, it's know, not even like a bomb's gone off. It's more random than that. It's much more random, yeah. I mean, it's all luck of the draw. Yeah. Doing you know, a very I mean, complicated exercise in like fluid dynamics to work out whose house gets fucking uprooted. Yes. So, all right. Uh, now, the official death toll from this incident was uh, 2,209 people. Uh, later revised to 2,208 people because uh, one guy who was reported missing um, turned out he just managed to extricate himself from the giant pile at the stone bridge and just walked out of the valley and never looked back. Understandable. <laughs> yeah. Understandable yep. response. Yep. You yep. can leave. <laughs> <laughs> and they found him just, living in they found him living in Massachusetts like 20 years later. That's funny. <laughs> At the top of a massive hill. Yeah. I have the highest house in the state. <laughs> <laughs> this was the worst man-made disaster in American history until Bush did 9-11. Um <laughs> And it was the worst disaster of any kind in America until the 1900 Galveston hurricane. Huh. Bodies were found as far downstream as Cincinnati. Fuck. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and as late as 1911. Yo. Just fishing out a skeleton. Yeah. Oh, hey, that's Steve. A, a skeleton Johnstown, covered yeah. in like barbed wire. That's like we've even <laughs> flicked the, the sum on this bit of Pennsylvania by accident. <laughs> yes. 1,600 homes were destroyed. Four square miles of Johnstown were leveled. There was about $17 million in property damage, all told, which is about $497 million in today's dollars. Yeah. Um, now, recovery efforts started really quickly. Um, a lot of folks who were, you know, local industrialists who may have been involved in a certain club uh, started <laughs> trying to really pool resources as quickly as possible uh, for, you know, maybe oh, yeah, genuine concern, part. but also, you know, let's try and cover our asses here a bit, right? Are you um, suggesting that this disaster has some kind of a class character? Oh boy, uh, wait, 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 wait till we get to that. Um, <laughs> So, you know, the Pennsylvania Railroad restored service to Pittsburgh in two days. Uh, relief workers started streaming in. Most of those relief workers were morticians. Um, mm. Yeah. Well, at least there's a lot of wood around. This is true, yeah. Um, now, here, here's the part we're all waiting for. What, what happened to the guys at the South Fork Hunting and Fishing Club? 
Oh, uh, they got feel bad medals. Uh, hmm. Yeah, th- nothing, nothing happened to them. That's uh, of course. You know, they they convened the Pittsburgh Relief Committee to send aid to Johnstown, but also re- retained the law office of Knox and Reed. And both Knox and Reed were members of the club. That's um, convenient. To hmm. fend off all the lawsuits, they managed to successfully argue that the dam breaking was not due to their negligence, but was an act of God. Oh, okay. yes. A mysterious act, act of, of God's, God's love. love. Yes. I love force majeure. It's such a good doctrine to have. Now, one of the interesting things is though they 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 won they won all their court cases or their court cases were dismissed. So they never mm. had to pay out a cent. Um this was one of the incidents which sort of caused the concept of strict liability to come into force. Um which is that yeah, even if it was an act of God, you're still responsible. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, there there were no legal repercussions Ooh. for anyone as a result of this. Excuse me. Just none at all. Cool. But but there was one positive outcome, which is that, you know, at, at least uh flood control measures were designed uh for Johnstown, right? And nothing bad ever happened again. Well, after a major flood in the 1930s, those uh, those <laughs> flood control measures were actually put in place. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. So, you know, and as a result of those flood control measures, Johnstown would only be destroyed by a flood uh, from a dam break one more time in 1977. <laughs> um, the same dam? No, it was a different dam. Oh, uh, okay. That'll do it. Yeah. So, you know, it's... um. These people can't get a break. So I'm learning. Yeah. Um, so I thought we'd conclude with a poem by a poet from Johnstown, Isaac Reed. Uh, this is this another view of the uh, debris field short of the stone bridge. You can see the mills just beyond the stone bridge are working fine. Um, <laughs> So, many thousand human lives, butchered husbands, slaughtered wives, mangled daughters, bleeding sons, hosts of martyred little little ones. Worse than Herod's awful crime, sent to heaven before their time, lovers burnt and sweethearts drowned, darlings lost but never found. All the horrors that hell could wish, such was the price that was paid for. Fish. And then the fish fucking escaped anyway. So. Yeah. Christ. <laughs> just a just a, a guy in a like a top coat and tails trying to fish upstream from this and being like, oh, this sucks. All I, I all I get is barbed wire. Yeah. So a bunch of corpses. Yeah, barbed wire, corpses. Um, yeah. So um that's the that's the Johnstown flood of 1889. Uh, one interesting thing is the stone bridge has become sort of a symbol for the city of Johnstown's resilience because it's still there. Um, Arches love yes. staying up. Arches love staying they up. They love it. It's they the, just finished it's their a favorite shit to do. <laughs> they just finished a, a fancy gamer lighting project uh, on it. <laughs> RG Yo, you got an RG, RG bridge. RG bridge. RG bridge. <laughs> So, I guess the moral of the story is arches. Yeah, mm-hmm. build, I guess build, 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 arch. build stone arch bridges. B- also, b- don't b- be a barbed wire factory near a river. Build build an arch <laughs> dam. We just we just push the arch on its side. That works too. <laughs> don't live downstream of a dam owned by a fishing and hunting club, which is extremely negligent. Do not live under capitalism. That's a good one. It will it will kill you for the benefit of rich dudes, and they will never face any consequences. Well, when you think about it, it did hurt the hunting and fishing club because that is they true. That's they, one, they will face one consequence. Yeah, they didn't have a reservoir anymore. They had to shut it down shortly afterwards. Aww. I think it operated for one more season. Or one out. So yeah, yeah. But so you still have hunting, I guess. Real, yeah, they still had hunting. I mean, the real victims here are the Carnegies and the Henry Clay Fricks and the. Um, mm. You know the uh, 
you know, it's, it's because it's because of, um, you know, we, we have to really feel sorry for the people who would be billionaires if inflation were bigger back then. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of um, libraries, though, which makes up for it. Obviously. <laughs> Only because he was forced to. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, um, that's the story of Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Well, part one of the story of Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Are we going to do we, parts two and three? Yeah, we got two more episodes yeah. out of this if we want to. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, stay tuned for future episodes on the Johnstown Flood of 1936 and the Johnstown Flood of 1977, um, <laughs> where we get to complain about taxes. Just a montage of the, pe <laughs> the people yeah. of Johnstown in every generation. Just like there's a flapper, and then there's a woman in like a uh, war uniform, and then a woman in a poodle skirt, but they're all getting swept down the same <laughs> river. <laughs> Well, I, I, I imagine when they established the Johnstown Flood Museum, they didn't realize they would have to update it so frequently. <laughs> <laughs> How can I make this museum fresh and interesting? Oh, I, I ask <laughs> as I'm holding this cursed monkey's paw. <laughs> we need we need something to um, you know. I, I mean, other, other towns in Pennsylvania have opioid problems, but Johnstown still has more classic problems. Yeah, you know, you know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, do a segment on this podcast called Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. People keep saying in the comments that they know who the uh, previous Safety Third was by. And, uh, it was you, by an actress. Was yeah, by you, an do, actress, you yeah. do not. You do not know. We, we, no we neither confirm nor deny any of yes. this. We don't uh, reveal the identities of confidential sources on this podcast. This, this is true. All right. So, anyway, with all the stories coming in of people being affected by the stupidity or callousness of others, I thought I'd share the story of the worst decision I've ever made and the worst Ooh. boss I've ever had. Self safety third. That's mm -hmm. rare. Yes. I work as a geological engineer. We're the uh... people who missed the clay layer and caused the Vajant Dam disaster. If, if, mm -hmm. you if you believe my university lecturers, it's all our fault. Um, <laughs> well, like Justin, you're quite complimentary about them because you think they're like dirt wizards. Yeah, I was, I was kind of like, well, I, I sure don't know how the hell that works. Um, uh, 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 like s earth sorcerers. You want me? You want me to? You want me to do something with a tensor? I will just look at it dumbfounded. Um, I like that they have a bomb robot, but for drilling, mm -hmm. I appreciate that a lot. Just an auger. The field parts of my job have me accompanying drilling rigs or excavators uh, to supervise around to, to supervise works for for insurance and health and safety, and to log the soils and rock we dig out. Right. A few years back, I was working for a small company. You know, the sort of friendly paradise where the owner, your boss, and the person you complain about to your boss being abusive are all the same person. Right. Oh no. I, oh, I, I, I know that feeling. Yes, um, you <laughs> yeah. The, the guy running the office was an intensely reasonable guy who had punched a hole in the plasterboard near his desk the last time equipment broke on site. Um, <laughs> Level headed. Just, great. Just, yeah. yeah, it's Adam Driver from Marriage Store. Yeah, it's bad. You know, I always want to, you know, a good Kyle moment right there. Right. Yeah. I'd been sent down e to every London. Every day, every day I have to repair a drilling rig. <laughs> I'd been sent down to London to do uh, night shift works inside in Aldi, right? Cool. I didn't know the, they were British, okay. Uh, no, Aldi's German. Aldi's German. Well, no, I, no, I'm the person writing the safety uh, third, not Aldi. Uh, no, uh, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're uh, Britain. Uh, they're British. Yeah, they're from hmm. Britain. You sound like you're from London. <laughs> There was some question of contamination beneath the store, and we needed to get soil samples. We were to core through the concrete floor and drill holes through the dirt below. Now, uh, so everyone knows, this is a, this is a you know, geological drilling rig. What you do is it drills down, uh, makes sort of a hollow hole, 
And then you pull out core samples, which you can see here, along with this bird. Um, cool bird. Sweet bird. And then you can sort of look at the core magpie? samples. Uh, I, I don't know. I what wish I knew anything about birds. I don't know anything about yeah, birds. Yeah, I always admire bird people because I'm like, they'll just be like, oh, that's a lesser spotted warbler or whatever. And I'll just be like, oh, fuck, oh, pretty dude. pretty that's... bird. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, cool. So <laughs> I, I, just like, I just like looking at the bird. And I was like, damn, you can fly and I can't. <laughs> so, you know, they, you, you pull out these core samples, you put them in a box, and then you can figure out, you know, the sort of condition of the soil or the rock underneath, right? So, when we were quoting the work, I I'd pushed to add fume extraction equipment as the rig we were proposing to use would be a tracked window sample rig, which is powered by a diesel engine and isn't suitable for use in a confined space. Photo of the type of rig attached. Oh boy, we're getting the kitchen safety thirds again. Yeah. Get woozy. <laughs> <laughs> I was told the store was a large warehouse type building with high ceilings, and so therefore fume extraction wasn't needed. Oh no! <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Come the day of the works, uh, I was working in the morning in the office in the AM, and given the afternoon off to commute down to London from Birmingham, right? I check into a terrible hotel, get a few hours sleep, and then head over to the Aldi. I go in to buy food before it closes and notice a problem. The ceiling is low. The building was not a high warehouse, and there's a dropped ceiling that almost touches the tops of the shelves. I called my manager at home and told him about the ceiling and asked for fume extraction. He told me there's no time to get it now, and it's not on the quote anyway. Get the job done. Oh boy. Oh no. At that point, the drillers arrived, and I decided to be stupid. I asked them if they were willing to get the work done quickly. Now, to generalize, drillers always want to get the work done quickly. You know, the greater <laughs> part of my health and safety duties consist of making sure they wait for me to scan for cables and that they dig the first meter with shovels rather than drilling under power, right? You know, because it's, it's the depth range where you find the most cables and going deeper with shovels is a nightmare, right? If the drillers aren't stopped, they'll rush ahead with the work anyway, aware that the legal responsibility for any accidents is on us. <laughs> Owned. The, the risk of hitting a gas main and exploding never seems to worry them. Yeah, because you have to play the cool drill. That's a good point. Yeah, they are pretty I cool. I think I might have the mindset to be one of these guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just got to get me recording a podcast for like six hours, and then I'll just be, I'll be, yeah, fuck I'll it. Do whatever you, I'll do whatever you want. I was about yeah. to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fuck it, fire it up, yeah. It, it pays pretty good. Um, <laughs> so, you know, they said they'd try and get the work done before the fumes got too bad. <laughs> oh, that's not a good sign. <laughs> yeah. We ended up Later, cracking... as I was digging their bodies out of the hole. <laughs> we ended up tracking into the store, cutting through the concrete and drilling. Thankfully, the drilling went quickly, about 40 minutes per hole. I've uh, been there. Because the fumes were fogging the aisle by the end of each hole. Uh-huh. Uh, between the Just shelves... in the Aldi the next day, like, hey, why does everything smell like diesel? Uh, Aldi. Yeah, it's mm. Europe. Don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah it's true. <laughs> All of Europe smells like diesel. I don't no, know how you tell true. the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you telling me that America doesn't smell like diesel? No, no America smells like gasoline. Ah, oh, luxury. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Europe smells like hand, diesel and like, cigarettes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> On the other hand, all the lead in there, that, or at least that they used to be, has you doing all the mass shootings. We don't and stuff. have it anymore. Yeah, we got rid of the lead. <laughs> we have ethanol in the gasoline now. Oh, good. That doesn't pay a judgment at all. Well, I think at least that gets burned up. Mm. I don't know. We're potential future episode topic. Um, so, anyway. Between the shelves and the drop ceiling, these fumes were channeled in around us and refused to dissipate over, uh, over a half hour break we took in the middle of the works. Um... I finished up, drove back to the hotel, and checked out to get back on the road and working before noon the next day. Uh, it sounds simple, 
But since then, I've had more training on health and safety, including, including fumes and confined space work. The first thing they tell you is that you always need measures in place to deal with fumes because the first indication things are going badly is that people pass out. Yep. Yeah. If there's nobody outside the area affected, there's nobody to help those who collapse. I got very lucky that night. About a year later, I felt that I knew enough to insist on procedures being followed. Uh, I was made redundant after one year and 11 months at that company, and they were hiring <laughs> new graduates the next day. Oh, that's terrific. Yep. Mm -hmm. No good deed yep. goes unpunished. That's right. Yeah. Don't fuck around with, like, confined spaces and fumes, though. Shit no, is the worst not, for this. Not a good idea. You, there's you wanna... so many, like, maritime accident reports where it's like, yeah, this guy, this guy fucking collapsed in there and then six or seven people went in sequentially to try and save them and there's just a pile of bodies at the foot of the ladder. Yeah, or, like, exactly. They, they tried to re- they tried to, like, reverse engineer one of the, like, egress air supply things that only gets you one way, got down, realized it only gets you one way, then passed out and died. So... Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta, I, um... I, I like to read maritime incident reports for fun, which is because why I'm so fucking normal. Yeah, not a good idea to hotbox diesel. No. 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 Um, it, once we develop uh, machines that run on weed, this will be a lot easier. <laughs> well, thank you to the socialist Biden administration who are going to be on this. Of course, yes. Forthwith. We'll soon have uh, uh, a good socialist weed-based technology. Um, Smoking on that shit that killed Joe Biden. Yes. <laughs> uh, so that was Safety Third. Yeah, it was like catastrophically dangerous, but um Congratulations on being alive. Yeah, congratulations yeah. on getting away with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is a near miss kind of thing. Didn't happen this time. And therefore never will. Yes. Oh. Shouts to Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Yes. Mm -hmm. Me mean meantime, I want a giant drill on a robot. Oh, that'd be fun. We'll get you yeah. one. Thank no. you. Um, subscribe to the Patreon so that I can get a giant robot drill. Also yes. subscribe to Trash Future. And also subscribe, subscribe to Kill James Bond. Give me all of your money. I need yes. so many surgeries to make me not feel terrible all the time. Yes, give Alice your money. Give yeah. me your money. Mm -hmm. Give Ross give Justin your money. Your money. I, I would like your money as well. Our next episode will be on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. That's right. Um, That's right. I, I guess we just did the commercials, which are all give us money. Give us money. Give us yes. money. Give us money. Usual bonus episode uh, coming whenever Roz writes the damn thing. Yeah, yeah so European Siege weekend. Warfare bonus episode coming whenever I write the damn thing. Also, uh, shirts, international shipping, when? Right, yeah, alright, I'll bug yep. Union Pete. You gotta go Thank yell you. at Union Pete, yeah. You're welcome. Okay. Alright, that's an episode recorded at a weird time. Happy birthday, Vladimir Lewich Lenin. Mm -hmm. um, <sighs> I, th I think that's it. <laughs> All right. Bye, yeah, I, I only yeah. have one thing to say, uh, which is in in tribute. I'm not listening to you. I'm not <laughs> listening to you. <laughs> all, all right, that that's it. We're that's done. it. Bye, everybody. Bye. Smell you later, Zen. Alice, go to bed. All right, we did it. We did Ross, a podcast. Write your cathedral episode. I will do that. <laughs>